I know it came out a while ago, but I actually, I just got around to playing it this week, kind of. Oh, really? I mean, with all the big releases that were coming out, you know, the big stuff, like story-based stuff. I love Peggle, but I haven't really checked out Peggle Nights just because I've been busy with that stuff. Oh, I don't know if you know this, but I consider myself the Peggle Grand Wizard, the whole one-up network. Know. I've completed all the challenges in both Peggle, Peggle Extreme, which yeah. was the Half-Life yep. one, and Peggle Nights. Wow. So you, you're kind of a Peggle noob. Well, I mean, I like the original Peggle. I'm not, I'm no grand wizard, but I do, I do enjoy Peggle. I did Maybe play a lot of Peggle. Peggle is like the most deceptively simple yet completely complicated game I think I've ever played. And it's kind of a mix between Pachinko and the, what's the Price is Right game? Plinko? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a mixture of that where you're given all these pegs, you get a ball, you shoot it out, then you try to knock down all the orange pegs to clear a board, or you try to take them all out to gain points. And it's all physics based. And it's one of those things where you intend to play it for five minutes and Three hours later, it's 4 a.m. and you're bloodshot and you have no idea why you're still playing it. The rounds are so fast and like rewarding, all the noises and the lights and everything. As somebody who's really played everything that the original Peggle had to offer, what do you think about Knights in comparison? You know, it's, it's more of an expansion pack than like a sequel in that I don't see any big differences. A lot of the same characters, power-ups, uh, levels are obviously different, new levels, new unique designs. Um, some of them really, really complicated. Yeah. Um, so there's nothing too much different, it's just nice to have more Peggle. More Peggle is always a good thing. One of the things I have noticed that's changed in the levels, and I mean maybe this is just something that I'm kind of making up, but compared to the original Peggle, it seems like the levels are designed a little better around the characters and their power-ups. For example, you have the levels with the power-ups that extend the uh, mm -hmm. hole that your thing can right. fall into. And for those levels, the, the blocks are set up, the pegs are set up in such a way that you kind of need those extra balls in order right. to like break through and get to where some of the orange pigs are hidden. No, I'd say I'd say you're right on the money there. It's much more iterated than the original Peggle. Some of the levels were designed just on aesthetics, and this one it's all built around the power-ups and using them effectively to be able to clear the level and move on to the next one. It's subtle, but I can I can tell that I'm thinking about it, thinking about how I'm going to use the power-ups more than I did in the original Peggle. Yeah, and it's always interesting. I think everyone that picks up and plays Peggle, they go through like this series where they they know they hear about it and they're like, oh, that sounds dumb. They pick it up and play it for five minutes, and they just randomly are throwing balls around, and they'll clear through a couple of levels and get stuck. But eventually, they'll start to understand like how you can use it, bouncing off walls, making shots, timing it so that the, the bucket at the bottom is set up so the ball will drop into it. And I think that's really cool, and that to me, that's what I enjoy so much. It's, it's such a thinking game, despite its like inherent simplicity. <laughs> We get to play Peggle on Xbox Live Arcade, which is coming out, I think, early next year, sometime next year. And it's remarkable how the controls translate from the, like, the pinpoint accuracy of like using a mouse to just the 360 controller. Like, instantly felt really good. And on top of like using the stick to kind of aim, you can also use the uh, the R and uh, R and L buttons to like kind of adjust it sort of like the scroll wheel does on the mouse. Well here's here's something that I'm worried about with um, X, the Xbox Live Arcade version. When I'm playing with the mouse, I will sometimes point at the peg I want uh -huh. in order to make sure I'm aiming at it yeah. directly. And like I'm I'm worried about not having that exact level of accuracy with the because you can't actually really point at it. You're yeah. still kind of you're kind of aiming. I guess it's weird because I don't do that. I totally understand why you do because it's like the easiest way to do it. Yeah. But for me, like just picking up and playing it just felt right. All the phys physics transfer over perfectly. They also have a four player mode, uh, which is pretty cool. And it's interesting where they've done it. Instead of like having everybody on one map just shooting pegs all over the place, you're all playing the same level at the same time. Um, but they have like a little side uh, area where you can see like a smaller version of everyone playing at the same time and at the end of every single round or level you've cleared 
it uh, it has like a score meter that says how people scored and who had the highest score at the end of that round. But the cool thing is when you're waiting between shots, you can highlight someone else's the little box and it, it goes full screen so you can oh, see exactly cool. how they're shooting, what they're shooting, and it adds strategy to it. I'm so glad more people will be able to be be able to play Peggle. It's perfect for like the casual nature uh, of like the new party system, the new dashboard. And as far as like the levels in Peggle XBLA, are they direct ports of the original Peggle? Are they new levels? They have levels from the original Peggle and they have levels from Peggle Knights. I wouldn't be shocked if they're a Microsoft, maybe Xbox exclusive DLC. It wouldn't shock me if there's a Master Chief level or something like yeah. that. I mean like uh, they did the Half-Life themed level so it wouldn't be surprising to see them do like a Halo themed level no, or something. No, like it there. makes perfect sense. I'm glad you all seem to like the new hardware the Brotherhood decided to hook us up with. <laughs> you know, up until this point, we've been toying with Mero. Kill his bitch here, steal his money there. But I'm through playing. We know where he lives, we have his guns, and I say it's time we take that motherfucker out. What do you think? <laughs> Earlier this year, GTA came out, kind of blew me away, took the series in a new direction, and I, and I loved it for it. But, but in a way, like Saints Row 2 reminds me of this, this alternate universe where GTA remained this kind of this fun playground. It wasn't like about a serious story. It's about being in this crazy open world where just everything just meant to wreak havoc everywhere. If you really didn't like the hard, more mature direction of GTA 4, it's like you could have the best of both worlds with Saints Row 2 and GTA. It's like you can have the more serious, more mature storyline, and also just like the over-the-top, crazy, balls-to-the-wall, you know, gunplay in Saints Row 2. I really sort of was not interested in it initially, just after I saw the kind of doo-doo truck ad or whatever, because it was just like, I don't know, I saw that and it was just, it didn't seem like it was something I'd be interested in at all, but once I got into it, it was actually a pretty fun game. You know, and that's the thing, it's like, it definitely is immature, and like, and I think actually a lot of their jokes kind of fall flat, and the radio banter isn't as good, and like, it lacks the, uh, the charm and soul that I think GTA has, it's kind of like lovingly crafted. But, but you take all that away, it, it, as a city itself, and as just the gameplay itself, it's just so satisfying. It could use a cover system, but it doesn't have it, but the shooting system is pretty good, and like, you can blow a lot of crap up. And I think like, the big thing about this game is like, you have the story missions, which are good. We also have all the side missions, like tons of them. I mean, like, this world never feels empty. There's always something that you can do. It was interesting the way that they tried to set themselves apart from the Grand Theft Auto games where their, their version of the vigilante missions are basically like you're going around filming episodes of like cops where you got like this cameraman in the background and you're basically running around chasing down criminals but they disguise it with the guise of like oh you got this camera crew with you and they have so much tape footage to film you know just little things like that are really you know make it different enough to where it's not just a pure GTA clone. I definitely feel like it's the details that sort of make the game what it is. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I think GTA 4 should definitely pick up on from the game. Like, the cruise control option when you're driving the car for the shooting, that's amazing. It should be in a standard in all, like, sandbox games. And the garage where you could store your car, that really got me too. How you could spend all this time and money making a car, and then once it was together, you could just store it in the garage. So if you, like, drove it into a lake or blew it up, it was always there waiting for you again. It wasn't just, like, a huge waste. One thing I liked about the GTA San Andreas the most was the whole, like, gang aspect. I just I loved it. I loved yeah. the 90 gang 90s gangster vibe. And in, in Saints Row, like once you gain enough respect, you can you can have three of your homies run around with you on any of the missions and your co-op buddy. The constant co-op you can do like throughout the game, that's probably his biggest success, I think, you know, because like online in an open world, it's kind of like crackdown, just where like it's just so much more fun to play with a friend. It makes it a little bit easier too, but you know, you're just there to have fun. Mentioned Crackdown, that was definitely something that came to mind too, because I mean, the game just does make you feel powerful. Like GTA 4, if you get a bunch of guys on you, you're probably gonna die. And then from the very first mission in Saints Row, where you're like breaking out of the prison, it's like you walk out and there's like a hundred cops with like cars waiting for you, and you're like, oh god, because you come into it thinking like it's GTA 4. But then it's not. You just walk up and you just kill all of them. Ah! Ah! Oh, you dumb bastard! You might pull this off. Authorized to use 
Uh, I guess if there was one downside, I sort of felt like, like he mentioned earlier how he said it sort of lacks a soul, but I sort of feel that, I mean, it, it's like that and that it has like a greatest hits album feel to it and that there's a lot of good stuff in there, but it just doesn't sort of come together as like its own whole package. Like it has its own character and its idea, but it just, it sort of feels more like a fun video game to play. Like the story really didn't grab me at any point and a lot of the other stuff was just come in and have fun, but it wasn't kind of like a narrative experience. You know, when I think about that versus GTA 4, I think GTA 4 is a better game and like <clears throat> has more gravity to it. It's, it's a better story and it's a game I would always choose over Saints Row, but that's if I have time. But like, if I just want like a quick, like a quick snack, you know, if I want just, like, just a, a fun gameplay experience for like half an hour, an hour, I jump into Saints Row 2, you know. And it's like I think it's gonna kind of overlooked because of that. It's come out during a terrible time, you know. It's gonna be so many other games are out there. But really, I had a lot of fun with it. You know, I never imagined I would, but just between the co-op and just this great city, I was really impressed with it. <laughs> A lot of the guys on the message boards were real, really pissed off that this isn't the, the same old banjo, this isn't a regular platformer, and I, I personally didn't have a problem with that at all. That was, I, I knew it was different going in, and and I, I enjoyed what it offered. I would have enjoyed just an, like a new high-res version of like Banjo-Kazooie, like a reskin cameo game or something like that. That would have been really cool to me, but I thought that this was also like them taking a totally different path. And I think that it's totally different, but at the same time, it still feels the same in a way because there are still platforming elements to it. It's just like when you're doing platforming, you're doing it in a vehicle. the huge open world, something that I really didn't like about it was that you would have to keep getting the jiggy pieces and then load them into your into your van and drive them over to the place. Like, that just seemed really unnecessary. Like, why do I have to keep just driving them over? And then eventually, like, the town keeps getting against you. The police start chasing after you, and it just makes it kind of... It just drags it out. It makes it something annoying. I mean, maybe you found it annoying. Me, I kind of found it, like, fulfilling whenever or at least uh, a little bit satisfying whenever I'd fill up my car with like this gigantic stack of gold things and drive through town and plus I always thought it was kind of cool how like new parts of the town unlocked like it wasn't just like you only had access to that like to the whole town right off the bat I kind of always thought it was cool like how you actually felt like a sense of progression when you'd get like something added to your vehicle that actually allowed you to get somewhere you hadn't been before <laughs> Vehicle creation is like the, the the pinnacle of like everything, whether you're gonna like it or hate it. If you don't like doing the vehicle creation, the single player is gonna be totally crappy to you. And I mean, I think actually the multiplayer will be even worse to you because multiplayer, especially, I think it's important to make your own vehicles for it. The vehicle creation really didn't do it for me. Like it, it felt like for every mission, I had to go and build another vehicle. I had to just make these minor tweaks, but like that was just kind of boring. Like here I'll do a race, oh now I got a new engine, I have to put in another engine, and it's just slightly bigger, all these minor tweaks going through. There were a lot of times I wouldn't even bother making like, like uh, upgrading my vehicle until I had found like a ton of parts and then I would build like one insane all-in-one vehicle that might be able to like fly, drive on water. Like I thought that that was like the coolest part was like making vehicles that could do like multitasking, like fly in one hand and then like retract its wings and drive like a car. I just kept on adapting like one vehicle the whole time. If I ever got to use a custom vehicle, it was pretty much always that one. Unless like I'd realize there was like a horrible design flaw in it for like the specific challenge. The, the challenges got a little repetitive. Like The time challenges especially, like that everything is timed, that was pretty annoying. Right, I understand why they do it because they want to have like the ability to give you three different sets of rewards like based on how you do as far as the time goes. But yeah, having everything timed does get like a little old. Now granted you can go and you can explore the world while it's not being timed, but having the timed aspect does get, I admit, it does get a little tedious at the time. I don't 
know, other Banjo games never really had that good of multiplayer, and I actually think that the multiplayer in this is actually, like, really fantastic. I think the multiplayer like shows just like, it can show you totally like how two people think totally like opposite of one another about accomplishing the same goals. And I actually think that that's cool. Like it would be really interesting for people that like live with other people that are playing the game like I do. Cause you can see like, even when I was watching you play, like the way you would design vehicles was like never at all like mine. Like my vehicles would always be based around like a four wheel concept with wings. Like that was like what went into mine. And I'd look at you and you'd be building like these long column vehicles and stuff was everything you made pretty much your own creation? Because I tried using blueprints going through about halfway through the game, the blueprints started becoming completely useless, and I just had to make everything on my own. Yeah, I used blueprints at first, early on. I even actually just used some of like the early racers and stuff when I didn't know any better. And yeah, I tried building stuff completely on my own, but I'd always find like my vehicles weren't quite balanced right and they'd spin out. So yeah, a lot of times I did end up starting with a blueprint and then like at least leaving like the wheelbase size and stuff that they had established as like a good physics wheelbase and then building from there. It, it was annoying that it wouldn't tell you if your vehicle was completely broken. Like you could leave out the engine and unless you go to test it or until you try to drive it, push the button and you go nowhere. As long as a vehicle has some form of engine, some form of fuel and some way of moving forward like a propeller or a wheel, you're good to go. And then from there you kind of, yeah, it is a trial and error thing, I guess. Because I didn't always know like what would make it better. Like I would throw on a couple thrusters and it would seem like when I, when I start to play it, it would definitely go faster. But the speed dial that it was telling me, it didn't say anything different. You know, I'm also the type of kid that played with Legos a ton when I grew up. And so I could sit there and spend hours in that vehicle creation thing and testing my vehicles and modding them. I would have liked a little more customization with the vehicles. It felt like all of the blocks looked pretty much the same. Like you can only kind of paint one color. It always has that kind of gray color underneath. There weren't that many aesthetic things that you could do to, to kind of make your vehicle stand out. It was really hard to make like something like a, I don't know, on par with like the Little Big Planet editor or something like that, or even like other games like uh, Forza let you totally mess with the paint job and stuff like that. There isn't really anything like that, but I also think that I guess just the ability to make a vehicle with all the crazy components that it does and all the weapons it does and to be able to test it on the fly, I guess I kind of forgive it for some of those customization shortcomings. For me, like, like I, I don't like to be like a consumer report sort of person, but I mean, Forty dollars for it, brand new always is just seems like a great like deal to me. Like people assumed because it was forty dollars, it was going to be like a five-hour game or something like that, and it's definitely not. Oh yeah, it's, it's super long, and that's just if you want to do like the bare minimum completion, not like getting like you know being like the person that goes in and gets all one hundred and nineteen stars or whatever in Mario. Like that'll take you hours upon hours. Not to mention multiplayer. I just think there's like a ton of value there for the price.